This is Wicked Roadie, a wicked good podcast about Rhode Island events and life. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Mary Larson. And I'm Ben DeCastro. Thanks for joining us. The podcast voted best of Rhode Island by the readers of Rhode Island Monthly. And, you know, the other day, uh, Mary, I was at uh, a location and doing some filming. And Mm -hmm. somebody said to me, said, you know what? I really love your podcast. I really like listening to it. It's fun. Not necessarily for the events, uh, but for the casual banter. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that goes back and forth. And it's, oh. Yeah, it's uh, okay. Well, you know what? If you want to hear Mary have some really good banter, you got to tune into the other podcast <laughs> that she hosts with her husband because those ones, uh, especially if you get a topic where your husband and our executive producer, Blake, mm. uh, if it's something he's passionate about or gets heated, you hear all of Revere. Oh, yes. All, all the accent. <laughs> all of Revere coming out, and there's no question about it. So, uh, speaking of your family, you had your early COVID Thanksgiving with the mm-hmm. Larson uh, clan. Your 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 dad uh, and your mom came over. Yeah, my stepmom. And and, your stepmom yeah. is there, yeah. Uh, I saw everybody out on the deck yes. enjoying a lovely turkey dinner. How was that? It was so good, and I highly recommend it if, you know, some of the weekends coming up in November are warm. Um, If you keep your group, of course, to an approved size of people to have an outdoor Thanksgiving, it felt very authentic. (laughs) It was very authentic. Um, But, yeah, we we fried our turkey. We made a potluck, so my parents all brought some food, and we just sat outdoors and pretty well distanced still. Um, But it was just great. It was great because we don't know what Thanksgiving going to look like, right? Especially in our state with things being the way they are. We just don't know what Thanksgiving is going to look like at this point. And my parents being high risk, we thought at least we can do this. And then if we get two Thanksgivings, even better. Yeah. But otherwise, you know, for us to all get together, it was very casual, which was kind of nice. Um, we used my fire pit. So we had dinner at the table. Yeah. And then we ate our desserts around the fire pit to stay nice and warm. We had a TV outside, so we watched football. And I pulled up one of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day parades from previous years just up on YouTube, which is awesome because there's no commercials. And (laughs) as a parent, Macy's Thanksgiving Day parade is the bane of my existence when you watch it live because all it is has chock full of Christmas commercials for kids. (laughs) And it's like, I want that. I want that. I want that. Okay, I got you, got you. It drives me bananas. So actually for the past several years, I have been going on YouTube, finding these previous versions that someone has edited out the commercials and it's made my mornings on Thanksgiving morning a lot nicer. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, 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 Something that will make your weekend a lot nicer this weekend is the fact that daylight savings ends that's right ladies and gentlemen it's the one sunday of year that everybody shows up to church on time because uh they even if they're (laughs) typically you know a little late they'll be early because chances are they forgot to move the clocks back an hour Mm -hmm. we do that uh sunday early sunday morning saturday night into sunday morning so you get that extra hour do you think mary your kids will be uh receptive to it or will they even notice do they even care do they have a concept of time they so my son being in second grade, he started to learn about clocks last year. Mm-hmm. I think that this will be the first and possibly only year that they actually benefit from the extra hour since it's the day after Halloween. Okay. So even though we'll be doing a socially safe and early trick or treating on Saturday, you know, right. we're all being encouraged to do it during the daylight. Let's be real. My kids are going to be eating candy. And they're going to oh, be yeah. watching movies at night, so yep. they're going to be up late. So I think that this will be the one time. That my kids will actually sleep in and get that extra hour of sleep. But yeah, they have no idea. I mean, really, the highlight of this entire <laughs> upcoming weekend is Halloween. Yeah. Well, the 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 extra hour is nice for a little bit, but then it kind of just, it, it to me, it just kind of wears. I just hate the fact that you were going to be going from, you know, getting dark at, you know, 530, 6 mm-hmm. o'clock to 430, 5 o'clock. That yes. to me is just, I remember... Back when I worked at Cardi's every year, you know, walking out like that first day back after the the hour change, Mm -hmm. walking out of my office at like, you know, four or five o'clock or going somewhere and just being so dark out. It's just like, ugh, yes, the most depressing (laughs) 
thing. It really is. It's just like, uh, I don't care about the hour of sleep. Just give me some sunlight. Right. But right. that is uh, that that is what it is. So that changes. Well, I'll Although, recommend for people to get, uh, Ben and I, of course, are doing this over Skype. I've got my light therapy lamp. And oh, very good. I got to tell you. If you're someone who really could use a little extra light, you know, that 430 time, maybe you're you're doing work or having late meetings because same thing, Ben, like I'm ready to get in jammies and just like sit on the couch when the sun goes down. Um, So getting one of these lamps has seriously, seriously helped me keep from that like tired feeling coming in too early. Well, I'm curious if people would ever do, if you ever watch uh, videos on YouTube from Casey Neistat, who is, he's a YouTube creator, vlogger. He's been hired to like, from times to like fly on some of the high end planes like uh, Emirates Mm -hmm. or uh, these different uh, airliners and they put them in first class to kind of review it and whatnot. And there's a plane, a few planes where in the, even in the middle seats, the, the first class little suites, they're little closets that you sit in. There's windows and the windows have like a, 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 like what's happening outside. But you could totally change that to be daylight or nighttime. Yeah. I wonder if offices or buildings will ever do that just to just to mess with the people inside. Right. Make it them be more productive. Oh, yeah. Jolly. It's like, oh, you, you, you're you feeling great. Look at that. It's six yeah. o'clock. It's still bright and shining. And it's January 3rd. There you so go. It's, yeah, wonderful. Just at least we're great. not like in Alaska where isn't it dark for almost a month? There's there's one point of the year where it's dark for a while, but there's another time of the year where it's always light. Oh, that, uh, that cannot you know. handle. Uh, yeah. So, but you know, so long as they don't have windows on their igloo, they're fine. So, uh, you know, that's just, it's, it's their choice to live there. People, you know what? They can move. They can go to the tropics if they want. Yes. They won't like it, but they can go. I actually have a friend who lived in North pole, Alaska. There's really? a town called North Pole, Alaska. The Naturally. street, um, the street poles are like red and white candy cane striped. It's all, you know, Christmas yeah. out. Sure. So she lived in North Pole, Alaska, and she currently moved to Georgia. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you can only handle so much of that, I would assume. Yes. Yes. But nevertheless, uh, no matter what you're doing, when you're on the road, working, getting errands done, maybe you're driving yourself right now through North Pole, Alaska, and you're saying, why is everything red and white? Well, mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen, just get a clue. Uh, if you hear something that piques your interest, you can find all the links on our website, wickedroadypodcast.com. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mary and I were talking about this earlier. It was really a a challenge this week to find events that were happening because Halloween being on the Saturday night and the Mm -hmm. social distancing guidelines. But there are some things happening out there to uh, to to get you through the weekend and even into next week. For example, this is the final weekend for the Jack and Lantern Spectacular at Roger Williams Park Zoo. Now you do have to make reservations ahead of time, but you can go. It's a drive through. You're not going to get out of your car. You can drive through. It's fifty dollars a vehicle. They bring the snacks and the treats to you while you're waiting up and queued in to go into the zoo. You drive through the zoo to see the thousands of masterfully carved pumpkins uh, on the trail. It's really something special. And if I might add, the zoo could really use your help this year. Obviously, like so many other organizations, just being absolutely obliterated budget wise by COVID. So, so true. Um, one fun event that I wanted to let you know about, it's another local place, you know, anything that we can be doing to really be helping all these organizations uh, in and around our state. Um, it's this company called Mobile Quest. It's located in Cranston. Okay. It's actually run by science teachers who wanted to include some more STEM activity activities for kids. So they're actually having a spooky movie making event on Friday, October 30th. It takes place from 5 to 8.30 p.m. And they're going to, it's just for kids, they get to make mini spooky movies. So they're going to write, direct, oh. and film and edit all their movies. There's going to be assistance there. Um, and they'll be filmed with this green screen and a stop motion masterpiece or live action thriller will be created for it. So everything they need, all the equipment is there. And they are, of course, asking that masks be worn. Um, There's going to be social distancing, of course, and it is limited to a small amount. But they also have an event taking place on Election Day. So, of course, a lot of kids, you know, are out of school on Election Day. And they're going to be making sure that they have a couple of different sessions there for kids to do lots of fun STEM activities. So that place, once again, it's called Mobile Quest. 
on Monday, the Seven Stars Bakery located over there in Cranston is having a blood drive. So they need uh, the Rhode Island Blood Center obviously has been hit as well with the various issues with people not being able to come and donate. So uh, blood is certainly needed uh, for various people to get, you know, therapy or, you know, for different ailments that they're going through. So they're partnering with the Seven Stars Bakery over there in Cranston from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., just just go there. Uh, it, it really needs to uh, they, they really need your help. They're asking you to schedule an appointment and go online and we'll have the link for you there so you can just set it up just so they don't have a uh, bunch of people waiting and they can safely distance you uh, when you are getting uh, while you are making your donation. And plus, you know, it's seven stars mm-hmm. bakery. I mean, you can go get a delicious pastry, maybe some bread or so a great cup of coffee over there. So go check that out. That is happening on Monday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. What else you got? If you're someone who has little kids and you're just still trying to figure out what you're going to do about Halloween, I highly encourage you to find your local trunk or treats. A lot of libraries or churches will be doing these events, sometimes even just your local elementary schools. And this is where people set up a fun display with their trunks. They have their candy and obviously masks are going to be worn, social distancing. But this way the kids can get their costumes, get their candy fix. Because I don't know about you, like my kids love running around the dark and knocking on doors, but that's just something that we're not supposed to be doing right now is especially in the dark. So this will be, you know, socially safe. So you can do these trunk or treats. And the other thing that I want to make sure that people know about is that next week, um, the Boy Scouts are going to start handing out their scouting for food bags. So, you know, we always get those like on our doorknobs and everything, you know, where the Boy Scouts are trying to get food for the food banks. So just keep that in mind as you're doing your food shopping, that the food banks really, really, really need our help right now. And so when you do get that plastic bag on your doorknob, make sure you hold on to it and know that the Boy Scouts are going to be coming around trying to help us out. Fantastic. Well, Mary, you were just talking about the various uh, trunk or treats and different things that are happening. This Saturday, uh, they will be uh, handing out candy over at Paul Mary's Bakery. Now, earlier this summer, I had a chance to talk with them. It's a a uh, multi-generational family-run business of wonderful people over there and it's just something different to offer to families if you you want to get the kids in a costume and head on over to Paul Mary's Bakery over in Johnston they'll be doing it during regular business hours they ask you to wear a mask obviously all the standard restrictions but Mm -hmm. here's the thing the kids have to say trick-or-treat that is like if they don't say trick-or-treat no candy they, they are shutting it down. You, you, you will say trick or treat or else you get nothing. That's it. We have to preserve some traditions in this country of ours. And this is what it is. This is the COVID will not take away the words trick or treat. Say it or else you're not getting any candy. <laughs> I love it. But you can get some delicious, but you can get some delicious uh, food over there as well while you're there. It's such a delicious place. Seriously, one of my favorite bakeries. mm, Pick up some pizza. Maybe you grab some meatballs. Maybe you grab some of the the, the to-go items there. You can take Mm -hmm. it out and let's face it, you're not going to make it much further than the parking lot because you're going to eat it right there. (laughs) True, Um, true. (laughs) Mary, when you pick up bakery pizza, are you the kind of person that just puts it in the car and drives home or to wherever? Or do you crack that box up open as soon as you... Uh, oh yeah! As soon as you I get in the car sure. and have a piece, yeah, I, you gotta I make sure it. I get a couple extra slices. If not, um, if I'm a little nervous about the sauce consistency while I drive, I'll pick up the pizza chips and then I'll eat that in the car ride because that is a, you know it's just yeah. a little bit easier to hold while I drive. But oh yeah, uh, okay. I'm drooling now thinking of it. Thank you, well, Ben. <laughs> you're you're closer. You're on the you're on the other side of the uh, the 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 mighty uh, Providence River there. So you you're a lot closer than I am. So you can take on the a ride land over of there. bakeries. Yes, yeah, exactly over there. <laughs> right, 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 it's a wonderful right. place to be. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is no secret that we live in the smallest state in the country, and it's also no surprise that Rhode Islanders are among those who have the biggest tots you'll find anywhere. You know, every day, our family and friends, people across our communities, they're giving their gift of time by volunteering, and that's why... 
Mary, that's why we partner with the United Way of Rhode Island. That's right. Well, during these unprecedented times, it is more important than ever to lend a helping hand if you're able to, particularly in support of our most vulnerable neighbors. So please consider the needs of these three local organizations. The Dare to Dream Ranch, they're located in Foster. They, uh, and you don't need a passport to get there. Uh, it's located in Foster, as I mentioned. They offer no-cost co- no equine therapy programs. That's a horse therapy for people with uh, experiencing PTSD, anxiety, and depressions. This organization specifically helps members of the service, veterans, and their families. So Mm -hmm. they are needed. uh, They're needed help right now, helping to like a a director of giving or donation fundraising efforts. Mm -hmm. They need some help with that. They also need some help with the fall ranch cleanup. So you must be 18 or older to volunteer. You can contact Karen over there. What do you have? Judy's Kindness Kitchen, we mentioned this before, it's located in Providence, and they're looking for volunteers to help prepare sandwiches on Sunday mornings that will feed people at both Crossroads and Emanuel House. All ages are welcome, and those who are younger than 16 must be accompanied by an adult. But this is really a great way, especially if you do have kids and you want to teach them about the importance of helping out our neighbors. This is a great place to take them to. Fantastic. The Empowerment Factory, a Pawtucket based nonprofit, is dedicated to advancing children's creativity, self esteem, and social emotional skills. They are looking for volunteers to support their social media effort as well as virtual interns to help bring the arts programming to youth. Gail runs the program over there. She's wonderful, so go check that out. Of course, uh, this is just this is just part of the many things we do at the United Way. That's right. And to learn more, you can visit their website or simply dial 211 and get connected to the help that you need. All right. As we said in the beginning, everything we talked about today can be found on our website, wickedroadypodcast.com. You can check us out on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're posting photos from any of the spooky events going on in Rhode Island, please use that hashtag Wicked Roadie. Hey, if you're looking to get your message directly into the ears of our listeners uh, or any of the listeners of the various Marion Blake media podcasts, which, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, happy to announce the This Is Us 2 is back in full uh, swing. So get caught up on past episodes of This Is Us 2. And now the new episode's coming out uh, from Marion Blake. I will not be part of that show because uh, I am not allowed to watch that show. Mm. But you can explore the shows that... Do you get too emotional? No, I just... No, I, I, I I get too punchy. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I get antagonistic, I've been told. But thousands but here's the thing. Thousands of people, literally tens of thousands of people, listen to all the various podcasts each week over at MarianBlake.com. Get their information, email us, we at podcast at gmail.com, or reach out to them on Facebook. You will get your message. Your business can advertise on one of the hottest growing media platforms out there. Woohoo! Well, thank you. Until next time, I'm Mary Larson. And I am the This Is Us Les Ben DeCastro. <laughs> oh, roll, roll. And you've been listening to Wicked Rudy. We'll have more for you next week. That's right. That's right.